So what is next? Well, today I'm going to be bringing you guys what I believe are the top five best budget decks out there. Each of these decks are going to be right under $50, so completely affordable. Every deck is going to be mostly theme oriented, so you can start pulling off your, some of your favorite combos from the show. And we're going to start off with Dragon Ball Leader, just because it is the most versatile leader out there. And if you didn't know what it did, it is one of the first we, uh, wish leaders, so it does utilize the Dragon Balls. So first of all, this it does have a permit. This card can attack, because Shinron doesn't ever attack in the show. He just kind of grants wishes and then disappears. So you can put this card in rest mode with his active main, and you can grab up to two Dragon Balls from your life or deck, or one for one from either or. And once you get seven Dragon Balls, um, so you can add those Dragon Balls to your hand, but once you get seven Dragon Balls in your drop area, you can flip this, um, you can awaken this leader, flip it over to its wish side, and it becomes Miraculous arri uh, Rival Shinron. And at that point, the card still can attack. However, you can choose one of this active main once per turn. You can either draw one card, uh, play a free desire card, either or any desire card, so it can be blue, red, black, green, or basically any color, and you can play it as long as you have the energy cost to play it. So if you have two energy, you can play a two, in a, a two cost desire card for free so you don't have to pay actually pay that energy you just have to have that energy or you can use this ultimate ability and you can remove those seven dragon balls choose one of your battle cards it gets 10k or 10,000 attack power plus a triple attack so you can attack three times so it gives a 10k boost and also three attacks so like i said out of all the wish leaders that are out there shinron miraculous arrival shinron is probably one of the best so no uh take that back it is the best leader for wish leaders out there just because triple attack is a game changer it can definitely end the game and it gets a 10k boost all uh, automatically so that's two sensi beams on there so first thing we're going to do, we're going to start off with four Baba Champions Leader. And if you didn't know what this card does, this is basically uh, from the Dragon Ball show. If you guys ever watched it, where Goku kind of takes on uh, all of Baba's champions and then tried to, um, and at the end of it, he fights his grandpa. I'm not too sure why he actually went to go fight him. Maybe just to do some training or trying to get some uh, uh, special ointments or anything for Master Roshi. However, uh, when you play Baba, you can choose up to one bandages, spikes, or Sun Gohan card from your deck and place it in your, uh, your drop area. Then you just shuffle your deck. Then you choose up to one bandages from card from your drop area and play it. So this this deck or yeah, this deck basically utilizes your drop area. And it kind of can replay cards. So once you put them in, you can replay it. So once you play Baba, the champion's leader, typically what you want to do is just go ahead and put a bandages in there just so you can get a free blocker. Because bandages uh, to the rescue is a blocker. And then basically when this card gets KO'd, you can choose one spike card from your drop area and then place uh, play it and place it in rest mode. So like once the blocker gets KO'd, bandages get KO'd, you can play spike to the rescue from your drop area with ease and then uh the thing about spike is because each one of them have to get ko just like the show goku kind of knocks them all out and then uh each opponent gets is a uh, stronger than the last opponent so when spike to the rescue gets ko'd uh when this card is ko'd you can choose one song go on card from your drop area and play it in rest mode so you can just keep doing it over and over it's kind of like a chain so it could be like um the rescue chain or Baba's champion leader chain or things like that but also uh, spike to the rescue also as a leader or excuse me uh, another auto when this car attack it gets 9,000 power for a duration of turns so it gets it's at 6,000 and it gets 9,000 power so it's at 15,000 attacker then we're gonna be playing three grandpa Gohan they're 30,000 vanilla card uh, but just because we're, we're also playing the, the combo uh, how we get them out we're playing uh, three grandpa Gohan to the rescue with his active main, so this is the card you're going to be bringing out with that spike to the rescue uh, um, auto right there when it gets KO'd. So, Grandpa go on to the rescue is active main. You basically choose this card along with the bandages and spike card from your drop area. Then you can choose one Grandpa go on from your deck or drop area, then and play it. Then you can choose that card, so the Grandpa go on vanilla card. And it gets 5,000 attack power and double strike for the duration of the turn. Then you shuffle... Uh, shuffle your deck when you look on it. So basically what you have to do is put bandages to the rescue, spike to the rescue, and then grandpa 
Grandpa Gohan to the rescue at the bottom of your deck. And then you can either play a Grandpa Gohan from your drop area or from your deck. And then you just shuffle your deck after that. So they're not really going to be at the bottom of your deck unless you, um, well, you can just fill the shirt from your deck just to shuffle it around so they don't just be stuck out there. That way you can continue the chain. So what we're also going to do, so just in case our opponent is trying to outplay us and get around our combos and not attack our spike to the rescue or bandages to the rescue, we're playing Oblivious Rampage Son Goku. Uh, basically, he's in this great 8 form. And um, his active main, uh, his once return with a burst of 3, so you just mill the top 3 cards at the top of your deck. You can choose one red card. Uh, one red battle card and KO it so we can force KO our cards just so we can get the get the autos and then we switch that card to active vote so what reason why this is so good is because this card does have critical so we can attack your opponent critical use this auto to pop one get a boss card out or basically let's say we pop spike to the rescue we can get our grandpa gohan rescue to out uh, attack again with oblivious rampage son go goku uh, and then we can use grandpa gohan's to the rescue's active main skill to get grandpa gohan with the 5,000 attack power and double strike. So we have a 35k double strike beater at that point. So for our super combos, we're playing Temporal to the Rescue Trunks, which is just a sparking super combo. So once we have five on a drop, we can just uh, play it and then we can draw one from the 10,000 uh, combo power. Then we're playing three Shinron of uh, the Shinron figure of Magistry, just because it does have a really good active main effect. First of all, it has draw power. But then we can untap two energies because we're not running any blue or anything. We're not running Sensu Beans. Uh, just so we can keep this deck on a, a low budget as well. So we can untap two cards. Or we can grab, or we can give one of our cards crit, uh, 5k and critical. Or we can grab one of our two drops. Say like the uh, Bandages to the Rescue, Baba Champion Leader, or even our Super Combos or Spikes to the Rescue. And then we can play it so we can keep continue on our chains and our combos. We're also going to be, for our desired cards, we're going to be running the Oolong's Wish. This is kind of to get her past, like, Borgles and things like that. Or, like, um, Black Mask Saiyan that makes us force forcefully uh, drop two cards every time we use our Child's Wish. Um, basically, what Oolong's Wish does, you can draw one card, and then you can choose one of your opponent's uh, battle cards and give them minus 5,000 attack power for a duration of the turn. So we can easily kill off, like, the Black Mask Saiyan or Borgles or Kami or Dende and things like that. They're obviously we're gonna play in seven Dragon Balls because that's the only way we can get our Wish Leader uh, Woken. And we're playing four Dragon Radars because we want to continue the chain combos with the Child's Wish and things like that. We're also gonna be playing our counter card Power Burst. It allows us to get uh, one black card with, with a cost of one and add it to our hand, but we're not playing that. But we're playing, or we're not playing any of those one drop black cards, but we are playing. Or we do need it for the sparking ability, so we just take a life because we will be tapping out a lot, unfortunately. And then we're playing four Child's Wish because we want to be able to get our combos out. And then we're playing two World Peace just for that Sharon figure of Majesty. Um, you can obviously amp, uh, ump this deck, put some Fearless Pants in, things like that to give them all double strike. Or you can even put like, um, you can just put like more bigger boss cards to really utilize the World Peace as well. Uh, this is like I said, it's just like a fun chain because during the whole process of the Dragon Ball Saga, like Goku does go into like the Great Ape and things like that. So it's kind of like, it still kind of fits the theme and everything like that. Um, it kind of all, like it's all synergy, it all works for each other because they all play on each other. You play the Baba, they get out the bandages, bandages get out Spike. Spike gets out Grandpa Gohan to the rescue and Grandpa Gohan to the rescue gets out Grandpa Gohan and then Oblivious Rampage Son Goku can kind of just pop them off. So you can kind of just chain these guys together. What I really like to do is, for, is once I get all these combos together and I get that Grandpa Gohan out, I give him triple attack. And just kind of uh, give him 10,000 attack power. So if you have 45k double strike, triple attack going at your opponent. So it's a nice little finisher to your opponent. So yeah, it's like a little fun combo there you can kind of get off. So our next uh, Lisa. So this is our basically our cheapest deck. It's about uh, $33 to kind of build this whole entire deck. And our next deck is around $35. Uh, it's going to be Sun Goku, uh, Sun Goku the Legendary Super Saiyan. So this one is a really fun deck too, but it's a complete mono green deck with some sex, uh, set six cards. So if you didn't know what Sun Goku does, uh, when it's card attacks with the burst of two, uh, so you just mill two cards to the top of your deck to the drop area. You can discard one green card from your hand to the drop area, then you can draw two cards. So it's a 
basically a plus one but you do have to burst two but you want to burst two because on a sun goku the legendary super saiyan side it does leave spark in five and when this car attacks if you have a curling uh, card in your drop area and also five cards in your drop the car gets 5,000 attack power plus double strike so it's a 20k double strike at that point so with our curling cards since we have to have a curling to get that uh, auto off we're playing four human shield curlings because they are one drop blockers so they're really good to awaken we're playing newfound power sun go on so when it's, uh, it's also one drop so when a car attacks you get 10 k you take one card from your life and you get a 10k attack power and critical for a different uh duration of turn then for our super combos we're playing defending father uh Praragus, only because you get to draw two cards after that this card really focuses on uh, hand advantage and kind of filtering through our deck so this one you uh, basically draw two cards and then you warp one card uh, but you do need to be at four life for this one it would have been nice to have a sparking combo as well but at the same time uh just it's like we want to awaken as fast as possible as well they're playing four fledging duo sun go, sun go on they do have barrier which is good and if we have basically this on the field which is just two drops so it's not too much we reduce all the energy cost of krillin in our hand by one just not to specify energy so like some of our krillin become one drops other krillins become two drops and then some don't get the reduce uh energy at all just because they do need a specified color unfortunately then we're playing four or yeah four hyper speed sun gokus and these are also our awakeners so when we play this card we can choose up to two cards from our life and if we chose to take one or more this card gains 15,000 attack power and critical then for our other krillin we're playing fledging duo krillin it's a blocker and when we play this card we can choose one of our opponents battle cards and ko it so it's a free ko or as well so you can kind of clear the bill uh, board off if you need it and then it's a blocker on that then we're playing four persistent uh, persistent assault Krillin, and this is kind of like our daily defender as well. Uh, it's a barrier card, and when you play this card, we can draw one. But then, if our leader card is green or black, our opponent cannot attack our leader card, so they have to get through persistent assault Krillin first before they can get to our leader, which is really good because um, we're also going to be playing a final sun, sh showdown Sun Goku as well. Uh, and basically, what this card does is a five cost three green but we're not going to be playing it hard casting it what we're going to be doing uh is playing it when uh when it's auto is is when a quilling card with the energy cost of four or more which most of our quillings are four or more is uh ko'd by our opponent if we have a leader that's green or black which we do we can play this card from our hand uh but we can only play one of these guys from it so if one of these guys from our hands uh, once per turn basically and then once we play this card, we can choose up to one of our opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier, and KO it. And when we KO things, uh, we like to play Surprise Attack Frieza. Uh, so when a card, a battle card from our opponent is KO'd, we can just play Surprise Attack Frieza for free, and it's a critical, so that's really good too. Then since we ha do have a green Goku leader, we're playing 4 feet Kamehameha. Uh, basically, it's active battle. If our leader card is a green Goku card, a Sun Goku card, for a duration of turn, it gets 15,000 power and critical. So on the back side, on the awakened side, that's 20,000 attack double, or excuse me, it's already got 5,000 attack power from the sparking effect plus double strike. So it comes up to a 35,000 attacker double strike critical. So it puts a lot of pressure on the opponent. And then just to protect our our life as well, we have King, King Vegeta Surprise Attack, which gives our, uh, our battle card that our opponent attacking 10,000 attack power plus revenge so if they don't or so once after battle it they their opponent months or battle card gets KO'd so it's like a one for one special unless they don't take a combo enough to take it out so with our fledging duo Krillin or even our persistent assault Krillin gets up to 25,000 25,000 revenge card which is you have to combo a lot out of it just to lose your battle card as well then we play in four shocking death balls for our counters just because it has a sparking ability and it can KO two, uh, two costs or less on our opponent's side. So we'll be able to play that surprise attack Frieza. And then we're playing four parental strikes just to kind of shut our opponent down. So when our opponent plays a battle card that's four or less, we can just play this card and it never touches the field. It goes straight to the drop. So this, like I said, this deck is around like $34, $35. Uh, it follows the arc of the Frieza uh, from Clash of Fates basically so frieza versus goku the whole entire scenario where krillin gets uh, 
Krillin dies from Fleet Frieza's attack and things like that. And then kind of, and then Gohan's there and all of that. The only thing that doesn't really mix or that doesn't really uh, match up with it is like the Shock and Death Ball counter and then King Vegeta surprise attack and then Paragus as well. But everything else kind of it fits very well with the synergy of the deck. So our third deck is going to be Universe 7 deck from T uh, Tournament of Power. Uh, one of the best boxes out there. We're going to be playing with the Vegeta Explosive Power Vegeta. Uh, I really, really like the Universe 7 engine, uh, things like that, like the combinations you can build from it. So just getting right into it, uh, with the leader, if this Vegeta on the front side, when this card attacks a leader card, if you have one Universe 7 in your NG area, you can draw one card and this card gains 5,000 attack power. It's untap leader too, so when you awaken, you untap two energy. And then it becomes Explosive Power Vegeta. And if you have, it's permanent is, if you have three or more Universe 7 in your drop or your energy area, the card gets 5,000 attack power. And then it's auto is, when this card attacks, you can draw one card, choose one in your energy, or uh, choose one card in your energy area and add it to your hand. Then you may place one energy, or one card from your hand to your energy area. So you can just easily swap back out. So Vegeta, Explosive Power Vegeta has some one of the most unique effects i believe because no i don't believe any other leader has anything similar to his ability so he's always going to be one of those unique leaders out there and I, that's why i really appreciate him so for our super combos we're going to go old school and use backbone of the universe 7 just because it's a universe 7 leader and with vegeta's effect we can charge it and pick it up at any point in time i mean we can do this with any other super combo as well but we like having that universe 7 trait in there so with this super combo, if our leader is at five, car, uh, 5 life or less, we can draw one card and combo with this. But we just don't get that automatic 10,000 10, uh, combo power. So to help us awaken, we're going to be playing Awakening Talent Pen. Well, this is basically just a self-awakener card. We play it, we attack, we take a life and gain 10,000 attack power. The only difference from the other ones, uh, it doesn't get crit or double strike, but it does get bounced back to our hand so we can just recycle it next turn. Then we're playing three ready to fight Sun Goku. And then when we play this card, we can basically choose, or look at the top three cards and then choose one of our deck and then choose one universe seven card from among them and then add it to our hand. So it kind of just filters out for our universe seven cards. And it's a really good combo piece after that too. Then we're playing one in Yielding Spirit Trunks because we are running a blue leader and it does get us uh, sticky situations once we tap out. Because we are running a lot of uh, body pieces so we, won't be, we want to be playing a lot. Then we're running three Focus Mind Piccolos because this card is really good against um, boss cards or anything that kind of likes to remove bear, uh, remove uh, battle cards off the field because this card has not only blocker but bear as well and it gets a 5k boost after or during our opponent's turn if we have four more energy then we're playing two focus mind uh, sun gohans um, only for a evolved target but it does have barrier as well and then it has an active main we could do once per turn look at the top seven cards from the top of our deck and choose one universe seven among them and then play it but we just have to pay the energy for it as well so we can kind of just cycle through for our free cards as well. Then for a little bit more awakening power, just in case, we have Ult's Power uh, Tapion. Basically, when we play this card, we may choose up to two cards from our life and add it to our hand. Then we can choose up to one of our opponent's battle cards with the energy cost of five or less, or less be yeah, five or less, and then place at the top of our owner's deck. So it kind of just lets uh, stops them from drawing, essentially because they draw the same card. Then we're running three Barris. Barris is basically the most expensive card in this deck, around about two to three dollars, um, because this deck is only around 36, 37 dollars. But basically we run Barris because he's a boss card and he's really good effect. When this card attacks a leader card, then our opponent must choose uh, cards from either the battle area, any area, or hand that equals to six costs or, or six costs or more. So they have to drop cards that equal that. They can drop just one card for that, or they will have to drop up to six cards, basically that are one cost. Hopefully one cost. Because if they start dropping like things like successor, uh, that's always zero cost, so that doesn't really count towards anything. That's just a free drop for us. They were running four results training Sun Gohan for the Evolve. Because we are playing four uh baby or four of Gohans that we can't evolve from. Um, basically what this card does, uh, when we evolve him, um, he does have a nice little permanent. If there are two or more Universe 7 cards in our combo area, this card needs triple strike. But we're mostly playing him because when we do evolve him, if a leader card is a... 
no, when this card is evolved, excuse me, when a card evolves into this card, if your leader card is blue, not universe 7, but if it's blue, when you choose up to 3 universe 7 and with an energy cost of 4, oh, excuse me, not 4 or less, 3 or less, my apologies, 3 or less from our hand and play up. So we have a lot of 3 or less universe 7 cards that we can just play for free. Uh, speaking of, one is the Indomitable Link Piccolo, which allows us to grab our Gohans from our deck. There are three or three costs or less, but they have to be Sun Gohan Adolescents. Um, but then we have Energy Guard Android 17, another card we can play for free uh, with the results of training Sun Gohan. It's a blocker, and at the end of our turn, we can switch that card to active mode. Then we have an Indomitable Link Sun Gohan, and when we play this card, we can choose one of the opponent's battle cards with energy cost of 4 or less and KO it. Then we're playing Infin Infinite Energy Android 18. Uh, and what this card does, uh, basically it's like a free Han, because when our opponent attacks, if we combo with this card from our hand, we can play it at the, at the end of the battle, we can play this card uh, to the field. Then we're playing three Piccolo Cunning strateg Strategists, because it lets us put more bodies on the field. When we play this card, we can choose a... Uh, Universe 7 card or an Namekian, but we're mostly focused on a Universe 7 card with their energy cost of original aging cost of four or less from our hand and play it, but it gets us the skill negated for that turn. So the next turn, it'll have a skill. Sorry about that. Uh, then, next card, we have last one standing Goku, which will be our trump card just for those um, loan games and things like that. So, when we play this card, uh, it gets 10 when we have nine if we have nine or more universe seven cards in our drop it gets 10,000 attack power plus triple strike and its attack cannot be negated it can still get food, but of course but can it be negated uh, but it also can KO any battle card once per turn they're in for a negate we're running four master roshis for a forge of will um, we can so uh, basically when our opponent attacks we can negate them and then play this card so one thing I didn't say it is like a uh, the universe seven leaders both of them have warrior of universe seven so all so all these cards are universe seven um or have universe seven trait they can be played on any energy so they don't have to they basically don't have a special trait uh we can play green on top of blue and blue on top of yellow and master roshi can get me played basically with any color which is really good but flying nimbus will take like one yellow and we run this just to stop the swarming uh, we can basically negate the attack, and then we can place one yellow card, such as Master Roshi or Universe 7 Representative, things like that, to the drop area, and their opponent can only attack one more time with a battle card. So they can still attack with a leader if they didn't attack with the leader, but just one more time with a battle card. Then for a searcher, we're running Universe 7 Representative. Um, this card basically is treated as a Universe 7 card in all areas, so it can be searched out with like ready to fight Son Goku or Universe 7 Representative. Um, basically, we can look at the top seven cards on top of our deck and choose one universe seven card from them and add it to our hand. So, for that deck, this is probably one of my favorite decks just because I really did like the turn of power episodes and things like that. Um, so, like, I really do like playing a Vegeta. I'm trying to beat him back at the moment. It's just kind of hard to see what decks kind of uh, us go with him very well. But I'm, I'm working on some ideas right there. So, the next deck idea. We're playing with World Tournament. Are you going to be using a Hercule leader? I know he seems kind of bad, but he's actually used to be running tournaments a, a little bit uh, right before Miraculous Revival came out, actually. He was actually topping tournaments before Janimba came out. But if you didn't know what Hercule does, um, he has a really good auto, very unique. Uh, his active battle auto, or excuse me, that auto by active battle skill during the card's battle. If there are cards in the combo area, you draw one card, then a gate the skill for the duration of the battle so it doesn't mean duration of the game but like if you have a combo card in it just means like you draw one and then you combo again you can't draw it another time but every time someone enters battle with you and you have a combo card in the combo area you can keep drawing over and over and over again so then as awakened side it becomes bundle of confidence hercule and then you draw three cards yeah three cards not just two you draw three cards and when this card attacks you draw one card and it has the same effect on the back side so during the, uh, during the cards battle, if there are cards in the combo area, draw one card and they get the skills for the duration of the battle. So we're going to be running the Synergy of World Tournament. So we're running three Heroic Duel Videls, just because it is in the gate for one and we get to play it like Master Roshi. Then we're running four Vegeta Power Misuse for a Super Combo. So if our 
Life stat five or less. We can combo play this card from a hand, get into ten thousand combo power, and draw one card. They're running one dark duel to uh, Boro just because it's like our head in the deck. Um, when we play this card, we choose two random cards from our opponent's hand and send them to the warp until this card is, uh, is removed from the field. So they don't ever come back until Dark Duel Debora is removed from the field. They're gonna play in four Unbreakable Saiyan, Super Saiyan, Sun Goku. Just because like if we combo with Unbreakable, Super Saiyan, Sun Goku, we draw one from its auto, then we draw another one from Hercules' uh, active skill. Then we're running two Supreme Showdown Sun Goku, and then also two or three, excuse me, three Supreme Showdown Vegeta because they play off each other. These are our boss cards. And they're kind of cheeky and kind of a little fun, but basically is uh, they have a triple strike and they have a permanent. If Supreme Showdown Vegeta is in play in your battle, this card gains 10,000 attack power, so they become 35 attack power when you have them both on the field. Um, then it's auto. When your battle cards are placed in the drop area. With Supreme Showdown Vegeta's skill, and your leader card is a Wool Tournament card, which is all it is. Uh, you can activate this skill if there are no Supreme Showdown Son Goku in your battle era. You play this card from your hand. So, uh, Supreme Showdown Vegeta does is, is it has the same triple 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 strike and permanent. But when you play this card from your hand, if your leader card is a Wool Tournament, you may choose one card in your battle area other than this card and place in your drop area. If we do, your opponent cannot activate a blocker for a duration of turn. So basically, you can pop one with Supreme Showdown with you to uh, auto, and then they can't. Your opponent can't activate a blocker, but then you free. You can have a free play of Supreme Showdown Son Goku. So you have two triple strikers, 35k on the on the board, and you can't use blockers at all. So that's really good combos right there. Then for our self awakeners, we have Awakening Talent Pan. And it's the same thing we just used in the other deck. Uh, we attack, we gain 10,000 attack power, take a life, and then bounces back to our hand. Then for our board removal, we're playing Awkward Situation of Trunks. Our Awkward Situation of Trunks has a, so it's just a two drop, but it does have an active main. Once we turn, choose one Awkward Situational um, Autokusi. I'm not too sure how to say that name, to be honest. And then uh, it basically plays out their owner's, uh, plays out the bottom of our owner's deck. And if a leader card is a world turn, we can choose one of our opponent's battle cards and KO it. So it's a free KO as well. But then for more board removal, we have Test of Strength Son Goku. Uh, it's a double striker card with three costs. And when you play this card, if a leader card is a world tournament card, we can choose one Test of Strength Goku from our hand, or excuse me, Oob from our hand and play it. And then that that card and this card gets 5,000 attack power for a duration turn. So it's a 20k attacker at that point. And then we play Test of Strength of Oob for free off the Goku effect, our skill. And when we play this card, we can shoot with the uh, Strength of Goku, Test of Strength of Goku uh, skill. So we can choose up to two of your opponent's battle cards with a 20,000 attack power or less and place them at the bottom of their owner deck. And it's also a crit too, so it's a limited 20,000 attack power crit. And then for Aqua Situation, um, I took. Auto Kosuski, basically it's if we have awkward situation trunks on the in our battle area, we can play that card for free. We're also playing the ultimate card, but if you want to make this deck for like $25, because you can, you can just take out the ultimate card. It's only about $9. Uh, it's, a, it's one of the cheapest secret rares out there. I did a video on that as well, but uh, it's kind of fun to play if you get to the energy level. Uh, level. Uh, most of my decks, if you want to spice up the deck, you want to play Objection, like in the Vegeta deck. And the uh, and this deck and the Shinron deck, objection really speeds up the process, uh, especially like in this deck as well. But if you didn't want to play the objection, basically Sun Goku and Oob, uh Seeds of the Future. Uh, it's a double strike, dual attack ultimate card, so you can only play one in the entire deck. But its permanent is so it's eight cost, so it's it's hefty. But if your leader card is World Tournament. If there are six or more energy in both your energy area and your opponent's energy area, so if you guys both have six energy, um, then you can decrease this card's energy by two, so it's going to be a six drop at that point. And then when this card attacks, you can choose up to one card from your opponent's life in energy area and place them at the bottom of the deck. So you can neg two lives because the Devil Striker and a... Um, a dual attack, so you could take two lives for them automatically. If they take the double strike, then they're taking uh, six life, basically. They were running four Infernal Vanity Cell, uh, just because it's just like Unbreakable Sun Goku. We can draw one from our leader's active skill and then one for auto. 
then kind of for our searcher we're playing announcer ever curious uh, when you play this card we can search up the top seven cards from the top of our deck and choose one world tournament card from them and add it to our hand then we're playing four more counters as well uh, the announcer play by play we play him because he is a counter so we can negate the attack and then play him but when we do play him uh, during our turn we can draw two cards if there are two or more uh, wool tournament cards other than this card in play so we have two other cards and then play him which is a total of three we can draw two cards so it just kind of adds hand advantage which this whole deck is about hand advantage you can just kind of stall your opponent until you get your big cards out you can also spice this uh, deck out by putting like gogeta cards in there just because you'll be ramping up with like objections and things like that so you can kind of like um uh use a few more Vegeta cards as well because there are a couple of Vegeta cards that work well with him like uh the uh three drop Vegeta that like if your leader card is red you could play this card for free I would have put them in here too but like I said I wanted to make it more uh theme oriented so you can put all like little nice combos from like this show as well but my favorite cheap deck out there that is competitive I just have to mention this deck it's the Mass Saiyan deck I've already showed this one off of course but it's only $45 to make this deck and it's very competitive against like top tier decks including like Janimba, Gogeta Shinron, even like hidden control decks like Lord Slug and like aggressive decks as well as like uh, Brawly and things like that. So like if you guys are, I'm not going to go too much into this one because I've already showed the deck profile of this one. But like the cards are not that expensive. The deck leader is a, the leader card is a structure deck leader as well. Uh, the super combos are very easy to come by. This is these, most of these cards are from set four. You got a couple of promo cards like the Revive Ra uh, Ramager, Vegeta. These are like promo cards. Um, but a lot of these cards are very attainable, so it's a very cheap deck as well. So these, those are my top five uh, budget decks out there. Uh, being mass, the mass saying aggro deck being the most uh, expensive one, but it's also the most competitive one. Uh, you, like I said, if you you can make any of those decks I showed you more competitive, but you have to increase the price. That's just how it goes. Just to add more cards in there, more better cards. The Sensu Beans alone for a set of Sensu Beans is around like twenty to twenty-five dollars. They're like uh, like seven bucks a piece. Uh, they're slowly going down just because they're they're coming without some like doing two more variants of Sensu Beans, which is nice. So make them easier to get. But objections are like three dollars and things like that. It just all starts added up when you want to need a whole set of something. So, I mean, those are my top five uh, best decks for budget. Uh, if you guys want other deck lists or anything like that, just let me know. Uh, if you guys want to just comment down there to see if you guys think there could be other decks out there or other decks that you would like to see. Yeah, just go ahead and put a comment. If you guys like the video, always give it a like. And then also subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. All right, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And I hope to see you guys next time.